Hey there, this is Matt. Welcome back to another review, this time of Underworld Awakening, which I know a lot of people don't like this film. I, I don't really get it, don't really understand it, and the fact of, just as an action film, I think this works very well, because if you take out the end credits, all this is, which to me is a good thing, is an hour and 18 minutes of Kate Beckinsale kicking either human ass or werewolf ass. I like that they use sort of different locations compared to the previous films. There's some wonky CG, but there's also some good practical effects. Like there. I like this character, this detective, played by Michael Ely. I liked him. Having Charles Dance in there, that's pretty cool. I like the direction they took with the story. Pretty much, Kate Beckinsale and Scott Speedman, he didn't want to come back, so they used doubles. They were on the run. Humans found out about vampires and werewolves, so the humans decided to wipe, both, to wipe out both of them. Which, I actually liked that direction in the story. It made it so that it wasn't just the same as the first two movies. It made a bit of sense. Humans were hunting both of them down. This mass cleansing. A lot of this is told in video footage. And so she's just trying to protect herself she's fucked up humans on the stairwell including she like bends one guy over so that, like Friday 13 part 6 Jason Voorhees style so that his head is right by his legs she like jump and tips a guy in the head and we see like an explosion of blood she runs on this wall to avoid this flamethrower guy and blows up this flamethrower guy I'm like, holy shit, this movie's not fucking around. And that's why I liked about the directors, Marland and Stein, is they said, you know what, fuck this pretentious dialogue and this Shakespeare, wanting to be like Shakespeare dialogue, pretentiousness. We just want to make a full-blown, very fast-paced action film. Again, without the end credits, this is only an hour and 18 minutes. It's like they took all the fat that was in the first movie and a little bit that was in the second movie, which, and they just took that out and said, fuck you, let's have a very straightforward narrative. Her and her boyfriend Michael in the water, this grenade happens, they get fucked up. She's been frozen for over a decade. Someone defrosts her. She gets out, she's in this laboratory, this facility, she escapes, finds one of the last covens there in this new world where apparently there's not many vampires and apparently the werewolves are extinct. She finds out she has this daughter that she didn't know she had and this group of people want her. And you find out that group of people are actually werewolves pretend to be human and they're actually have this little secret uh, building up werewolves because they want to take over and they want this little girl because she's a hybrid and they're experimenting with her so they can become stronger uh, Stephen Ray he's you would yeah one of our main villains him who's really a werewolf and then his son Who's this like big super werewolf? <laughs> well, yeah, some of the CG is wonky, but some of the stuff they had to do was fun, especially in the finale, where it's just taking real cars and fucking flipping them over to get to Cape Beckinsale. And like when she breaks out, she breaks one guy's arm, and the fucking bone pops right out of the arm. That was a really fun, uh, cool visual effect. Just fucking the bone coming right through the arm. This film doesn't mess around with the gore. I appreciate that. It's a very, very fast-paced movie. She escapes. She like slices four human necks in a row. Just goes... Phew, 
just slices four necks. Fuck up guards. The action is well handled. I didn't see any fucking shaky cam. I didn't see any quick editing. And um, you know, people say this is the worst one or one of the worst ones. I'm like, I don't get it. This is what I would have done with an underworld movie. I would have said, fuck this pretentious dialogue. Cut the fat out. The movie keeps going at a very fast pace. I never found it boring. I really would like to know why people find it boring or what's so bad about an hour and 18 minute movie of Kate Beckinsale kicking human ass and then kicking vampire, I mean, a werewolf ass. You know, what's wrong with Michael Ely's detective? I thought Michael Ely did a good job acting wise. I like the tiny bit of backstory you heard where he had a wife who was a vampire. They tried to seize them. She opened up the drapes so she killed herself so that she wouldn't be brought in and after telling her hubby that she loved him. Stephen Ray, I think he's a capable actor. He was in Until Death with John Paul Van Damme and Stephen Ray has been a lot of stuff. Uh, Wes Bentley, he shows up so that <laughs> Kate Beckinsale shoves him through a window, gets some info, just drops his ass and a nice stunt of a guy crashing to a car down below. One issue, again, the, the CGI werewolves are not the best. I'll agree with that. Um, meets up with this one vampire guy, which his acting's not much, but he has more to do in the next one, Sally. Thankfully, they keep him to a minimum here. I forgot what the hell the guy's name was. Theo James. There you go. They find this girl, and Kate Bagusa finds out it's her daughter, and she's a half breed. You get this, I thought it was a pretty decent car chase scene with werewolves getting on the cars and trying to get into it. One jumps onto the van, and the girl, again, she like tears the fucking head in two, like tears it in half. I thought that was pretty fun. The Theo James guy tastes him to see his father, played by Charles Dance. Nice to see Charles Dance in there. At least this time. The next time, not so much. But this time, it was neat. Well, not neat, but it was fine. The Vikings arrive. This battle happens, and at least there's some practical effects there. And she's shooting one, shoots one in the head, takes an axe, and just jams into the head of one. Nice practical effect there. I like she's shooting werewolves, taking axes, slamming axes into werewolves' heads. What's wrong with that? I don't I don't get it. She shoots one, the bullet goes through the back of the head. Deal with the super werewolf jumping on the wall and trying to stab in the back. Uh, Theo James gets fucked up, and because of what happened with her in Underworld Evolution with that immortal guy, she's able to bring him back to life. She meets the detective. The Lycans pretended to be extinct so that they could build themselves up. I think Michael Ely did a good job. He was subtle. What he was telling the story about his wife, it wasn't over the top and over dramatic. It was subtly, it was a subtle way of doing it, which I thought was the right way. And then she goes in, she's shooting werewolves in dim lighting or in the air vents. Uh, Michael Ely helps out a little bit, say fuck it, goes in, tries to help when they're loading the daughter in this van. And she's sliding under tables, shooting bad guys. She fights this world down this elevator shaft and she does, they do sort of a callback to the first film where instead of shooting through the floor, she's shooting in this elevator that's coming above her. So that, that I appreciate more than the first one because the first movie, shooting through the floor, that's just a rip off of Nemesis. At least this one, it's now it's her own thing she can do, shooting the elevator so that, boom, it goes through and she doesn't get squished. And they show some of her superhuman strength, this really nice effect where this van, she hits the van with full force and it topples the van practically. 
I thought that was a really nice shot. I thought the whole finale in the parking garage was well shot. Again, the CGI is not the best, but there's some practical. The super wolf, werewolf versus Kate Beckinsale. Real cars being lifted and she's doing all this stuff. Stephen Ray turns and the, the girl right here fights with Stephen Ray's werewolf character. Some decent makeup. Um, then that Theo James, he arrives. Okay, fine, he can arrive. They do a couple little stuff. But they keep him to a minimum, which was the right idea. When they made him more of a part in the next film, that was a bad idea. The girl rips out Stephen Ray's throat. And I like the way she killed the... the keep I just say, killed the bad guy. Where she gets in this narrow hallway, so he has to change back. And she literally just punches a hole through him. Let's go. And he's like, I heal instantly. And she reveals a grenade ring. And she's like, I'm counting on it. So he healed too fast. So he can't get the grenade out. And he blows up. And it ends. Honestly, if this is the way the series ended, it would have been better than the next one. Because the Michael character, they didn't just kill him off. He's out there. So they're in this new world. Maybe they'll build up or you know try to survive and the movie ends and I'm like I got an hour and 18 minutes of Grant still has that color steam which I'm not the biggest fan of but this one I could for some reason maybe because I saw this on blu-ray and the others I saw on DVD now that's a lame excuse I don't know it just didn't bother me as much as it did in others the color scheme I don't know why it just didn't bother me as much as this even on the back here, it seems like there's at least a little bit more color on her face than on others. Maybe that's why. Like she doesn't look as white. She, look, there's actually some color on her cheeks. And even on here, there's some color on her cheeks. I actually see some pink, you know, cream color, not just white. So maybe that's why, but I thought the directors did a good job in keeping a very fast pace. I keep mentioning it's Without the end credits, it's only an hour and 18 minutes, so I don't really get why anyone would be bored with it. The daughter thing, is it original? No, but hey, if you don't want to steal, steal from the best. Steal from Aliens. It's a hell lot better than that fucking Resident Evil movie that did it. Which one was it? Afterlife or Retribution? I can't remember which one fucking did it. Might have been Afterlife. Whichever one, fuck, this did it better than that. Kate Beckinsale did fine. Again, I would give you that the CGI werewolves at times were not that good. And Theo James, he's not a good actor. But Theo James, I keep at a minimal. And at least there are some practical effects. Like you see on here. The action scenes are well photographed, well shot. It's not schizophrenic editing, it's not shaky cam. They cut out a lot of the pretentious dialogue. I agree with this. Fox TV, I never thought I'd agree with Fox TV. But you say it was back and fiercer than ever. Yeah, she's pretty damn she's someone not to fuck with in this movie. That's why I think the best ones are the second one, Evolution, and this one. Because Kate Beckinsale actually gets to kick a lot of ass. In the first movie, she barely does jack shit except shoot through a fucking floor. Oh, here's a sword. She does a little ballerina leap. Like she's Peter Pan and shit. And the next one, she does even less. The prequel, that just sucked. This one I thought was a step in the right direction, but then everyone hated it, and I don't understand it. I remember when I first saw this, I wasn't really a big fan of the Underworld franchise. I just, I don't know, technically the only ones I truly enjoyed was the second one and this one. And this one, like, wow, this was really surprising. Maybe that's the thing, I'm not a big fan of the first one, thus why I really enjoyed this. I think this is the best one. This one and Evolution. I would say if this is easily my favorite.
It's not boring. It's I think it's the fastest paced one of the flicks, and I think it's I would say the most action packed one. It has the most action of all the movies. It has the quickest pace of all the movies. It's the fiercest we see this character in all the movies. Supporting cast. Again, Michael Ely and Stephen Ray and Charles Dance. Nice to see those guys in there. The daughter character, I don't think she did that bad acting wise. And that's an easy concept that I can understand. Hey, her daughter, she wants to protect it. Okay, that's a concept I can... Is it original? No, but it's a concept I'm fine with. If handled well. I thought it was handled fairly well. I don't understand the, the hate for this film. I think this is easily the most underrated of all the Underworld films, and I think it's the best of the Underworld films. That's why I rented it. I was really impressed, and that's why I got the Blu-ray. Just like this was pretty damn good. And watching it again, I thought it still held up. Again, my only issue is some of the CGI werewolves are pretty shitty. I wish they would have used more, like, a lot more practical. There's some practical, but I would, a lot more would have been appreciated. And at least a different app in this Theo James died. Maybe the character would have been fine if he had a different actor. But this Theo James didn't, didn't cut it as David. But yeah, I really enjoy this film. I, I think it's an underrated one. And I like that they had different locations. It wasn't just posh fucking vampires and mansions. It was... Oh, a parking garage and a modern laboratory facility and it was I mean it it gave it a different feel than the other ones instead of just a fucking remake redo of the first movie I appreciated that so yeah I think you know if these directors will never see this video, but if somehow they did, you, I think you guys did a good job. I think you got the short shaft. If I did an Underworld film, it would be like this, except it would be much more practical. But the kind of pacing and action and what I want the main character to do would be a lot like this. So, well, that's just my opinion. By the way, that's my thoughts on Underworld Awakening. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.